Ready? All I can say, boo, and the service is over. You guys are ready. Good to see everybody here. Let's just jump right into the Word right now. We're going to go to the book of uh, Joshua, chapter 5, verse 1 through 9. Now, when it comes down to the Word of God, listen to me real carefully. The job of the teacher is to bring the Scripture to the level of the listener. That's my job, okay? It does no good to start teaching the listener up here stuff if they down here. Equally important, if they are down here and the word is up here or, or vice versa, then you're going to have a disconnect. So the challenge, the challenge is to bring it together because everybody in this place are at different levels of their walk and knowledge of God. So I pray that when I do preach that this word connects to every listener. And if you're down here, God calling you to come on up. God always calls us to come on up. He never comes down. He brings you up to talk to you. Okay. So when God takes you up, he does not take you, listen to me, all at once. Because that would be a culture shock to us. I mean, you know, because it's too fast. So what he does now, he takes you step by step. Look at somebody and say, thank God for the steps. Because if he would have got you there too fast, you could not make the proper adjustment. We would crumble up under the pressure, amen, of this, what he has exposed us to. So he takes us step by step. Why? So you don't faint along the way. That's why it's good to celebrate with those that God has blessed. And it's evident that you've seen them blessed because your time is coming too. Never criticize, never criticize what you don't understand. Because you don't know what they've been through to be where they're at today. They have cried many nights. Many things have happened, but thank God for the steps. In our text this morning, thank you, sir. Joshua has now taken over Moses' ministry. He has to now move all of these millions of people into the land that God promised them. But before they can go to this land, they have to enter into a new covenant with God. Thus, our story picks it up, Joshua chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Now, when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, their hearts melted in fear, and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites at Gibeath Haraloth. Now this is why he did so. All those who came out of Egypt, all the men of military age, died in the wilderness on the way after leaving Egypt. All the people that came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness during the journey from Egypt had not. The Israelites had moved about in the wilderness 40 years until all the men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died since they had not obeyed the Lord. For the Lord had sworn to them that they would not see the land he had solemnly promised their ancestor to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So he raised up their sons in their place, and these were the ones Joshua circumcised. They were still uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in camp until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, 
Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. Can you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much. Father, for the called out believers, oh God, that are here, for those up under the sound of my voice, for those that are streaming. I pray, Father God, that you would do something great to the degree, God, of they didn't even expect it. God, so I ask you, God, to take them up high and let them see what you have for them. Lord, I ask you, God, give me the strength today to preach this word physically and spiritually. We thank you and we love you in the name of Jesus. Can the church say amen? amen. You may take your seat, amen. I want to thank everybody that participated in, uh, in our Super Bowl Sunday sports attire. Amen. Y'all look great in here. Uh, the, the, the participation, amen, is, is good because the Bible says if he can get his people on one accord, he can do great things and mighty things. I want to continue from last week's message, blessed in a mess. Can anybody relate to that right there? How he's still blessing you while you're in a mess. See, somebody that's arrogant couldn't say it. But the truth of the matter, amen, not one of us are without sin. We all have come short of the glory of God, but thank God for his grace and his mercy that he has decided to bless me in my mess. I want to turn your attention back to verse 5, and I want to pull from here. Now, all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them had not been circumcised. So what we see off the bat, we see that God met the Israelites where they were. And, one, and on the basis of a blood covenant with God, they begin to experience a mighty move and a powerful move of God. Now, God tells Joshua, tell the people, in the process of me making them fruitful, I have to cut them. I'm going to have to cut them in their bodies. They had to enter into a relationship with God. They, they, they had to be circumcised. They entered into a blood covenant. And God says, I'm going to cut you so I can remove the reproach of Egypt off you. So if we can modernize this today. God says, I have to cut you so I can remove the reproach of the culture off you. I got to remove the reproach of society off you. I have to remove the reproach of worldliness and the way of the world because you are bombarded with it and you have received it. Instead of receiving what I said about you, I said I'm going to give you promises. And we see in the text it was the promised land. And God said for those that disobeyed me, now, how they disobeyed, they just didn't believe. They just simply didn't believe that God will do what God said he will do. He said, I'm going to let them die. They shall not go into the promised land. But those new ones, <laughs> I'm going to bless. So today, I'm going to remove the reproach off you. And in verse 6, it says, for the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they disobeyed the voice of the Lord. And God brought them out of Egypt. But the people kept going back to their point of reference. And God said, I cannot have this group of people that came out of Egypt going into the promised land with their old mindset. And God allowed the ones that came out of Egypt to die in the wilderness because they refused to change their mindset. And you see, these people, you got to understand, these people saw the miraculous power. I mean, they saw miracles. They saw the Red Sea open up. And they walked on dry land. They saw that when the enemy came after them, that God closed up 
the sea. You got to get a picture of this visually. Hey, man, we talking about a big body of water that just opens up, and you're still terrified and scared because who wants to walk through that? We ain't never seen anything like this. They saw water coming up out of a rock. They saw their food coming down from heaven every single day. They saw the power of God, but they kept going back to their point of rest. How can you sit in church, hear this kind of word, see your marriage healed, see your children restored, seeing your body come back to life? How can you sit in this every single week and then go back? To your point of reference, the problem with Israel up under Moses' regime is found in the New Testament, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. And here's what the writer says about Moses' group. He said, the word was not mixed with faith in them that heard it, and they did not profit from it. They heard it, but their faith was not mixed. They didn't move when they were supposed to move. They always went back to a fearful place. They always thought God is not going to do what God said he's going to do. Amen. When you get into trouble, you need to understand, God said, I know your future, and I know I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to prosper you, and I'm going to give you an expected end. Right in the middle of your calamity, right in the middle of your mess, he already reminds you, I'm going to do it now. Don't faint by the wayside. I'm going to bless you in spite of what you see. Instead of us believing that word, we go back. And the word was not mixed with faith to those that heard it. And they did not profit from it. Now, understand the word profit. If you ask any business person, to define profit, they will tell you after the transaction is over and all the expenses have been paid, the money left over is profit. I don't care how much you make, <laughs> it's what you have left over is profit. You can make $5 million, but if you spend $5 million in one cent, you're broke. And the Bible says after God got through showing his power to them, they had nothing left to give back to God. They would praise God for their daily victories. Excuse me, they wouldn't praise God. And they wouldn't thank him for the fights that he fought for them. They wouldn't raise their hands and say, thank you, Lord, for keeping them, amen, keeping them safe. And the Bible said, and the word did not profit them. They heard it, but it didn't profit them. So my brothers and sisters, the very first thing we need to be doing when we open our eyes in the morning is to thank the Lord our God. Because he didn't have to wake you up. And I don't care what you took the night before, amen, what vitamin, what herb, whatever, you need to thank the Lord that he opened your eyes because it is a gift. Ain't nobody, I don't care how strong you are, where you was raised, what you got, nobody has the power to open their own eyes. You need to thank the Lord. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for your family members. Thank him for your jobs, thank him for your career, thank him for your business, thank him for food and shelter. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I know where I'd be. I don't know about you, but I know where I'd be. I wouldn't make it. I said I wouldn't make it. So I have to thank him. I'm not even coherent yet, but I thank you, Jesus. Amen. When I see the light coming underneath the shade, Thank you, Jesus, because I have learned some along the way. I have learned that he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. I learned that along the way. When they said, you're not going to make it past 16 years old, I have learned he is Jehovah Rapha. I have learned he's Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. I learned 
He's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord provides. I had to learn this. God, I recognize you are the beginning and the end. I, I recognize you in my bridge over troubled water. I recognize Elohim, oh, oh, the mighty creator, El Shaddai, God Almighty. Elo Emmanuel, God is with us, Adonai, the master. So when the testimony is over and every situation is over and every circumstance is over, you should have something left to shake in your pocket and say, I know God did that. I know he did that. I could have not done that on my own. If it was not God in that steer, the steering wheel, I knew I fell asleep. It was no doubt I fell asleep. I don't know how I got here in the first place. Have you ever woke up the next morning and say, how did I get home? And I ain't talking about the one that's drunk. How did I get home? If it had not for the Lord, send angels down, take the steer wheel. They don't know no better. Well, but I got a destiny for them and they cannot die right now. Yes, yes, yes. You got to know that God did that. Nobody else did that. God did that. Prophet is what you have left when you come through the fire and you come through the flood. Prophet is what you have left when you come through the wilderness and out of trouble and you're still standing. Prophet is what you have left when you leap and shout and say, God did that. God did that. Some of you can't even understand where I'm talking about because you have not recognized if it had not God took that will, you wouldn't be here. You have to understand, profit is when you do business in the spiritual world. In other words, you have some dividends left over. You have some investments left over. Amen. You have some certificate of deposits, amen, in your spirit, and you know God brought you out. And if nobody else can help you, God said, you got some profit. Because when you heard my word, you profit from my word. You applied my word, and now you're out. Is there anybody in here who has come through some things and you have some leftovers? Yeah. Got some leftovers. I should have died, but I got some leftovers. I may be coming in here with a sore throat, but I can raise my hand. I, I, I may have some back problems, but I got some feet and I can still dance. Do anybody got any leftovers? You don't do another thing for me, Lord. You have done enough. So I'm thankful. I got some leftovers. I got some change. I can shake in my pocket. Sit on down. Let's go a little deeper this morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Sit on down, sit on down. Glory to God. Glory to his name. Elohim. Dr. Victoria Stamp, I thought about you. Brother Larry, how you took care of your mama. 
it took everything in you. But you got some profit left over. God Almighty. It was not in vain. Uh, I said, I say, where they at? They say they're on the island somewhere. They, they vacation and something. I said, they deserve it. They need to. Amen. And God wants somebody else to know in this house. Because you're taking care of an elderly parent. And it is a burden. They not a burden, just the care. But God said, when it's all done, when everything has been written, and the last dot has been put on the contract, what's going to come out of it is profit. And the Israelites had no profit. Not because God didn't move, but because they didn't believe the God that moved. And the word did not profit them. If I don't preach another thing that day, that's a whole sermon all by itself. That's enough, amen, to get you to Wednesday, some of you to Thursday, and some of you, amen, to 2024. I don't know where you are right now, but I can tell you right now, that's enough right there. But I got about 13 more pages to give you now. You know I'm a layer cake. You know that, amen. Uh, I got to give you more than, more than enough. Sometimes that's my insecurities, you know, about, you know, what I do. I just got to give you more than what I have just in case y'all don't act right. And I can preach my own self happy. And the word did not profit them that heard it. One thing about our generation is that we have more word than any other generation ever. I think we forget that the disciples and everybody behind them had no Bible. We assume they had a Bible to read every day. They had no Bible. The best they had was scriptures that they wrote and, and, and they put on their wrists in little, little pockets around their neck as a necklace they can pull out a scripture to. They had no Bible. And they made it. And here, we are 66 books, commentary. Oh my God, every kind of Bible teaching software. Amen. We are exposed to great preachers 24 Seven. We have Christian music on demand, but it's possible to have the word, but it not profit us if we do not believe the word we hear. And sometimes we become church junkies. What do you mean, Pastor? We just come to church to get a fix. We come to church to just get happy. And then go home and do the same thing we did before. Go back and get you the same trouble before. Go back and argue at your husband and your wife about the same stuff. And they heard the word. But it didn't profit them. To fail to believe God is the uh, epitome of insult. To doubt him is to just he is a liar. To suggest that he will not do what he has promised. And because they did not believe God, he let them die in the wilderness. My brother said, I don't want to die in what I'm called to come out of. Let me say that again. I, I don't want to die in what God has called me to come out of. <clears throat> These people had a wonderful deliverance but they fail to make a profit with God. Don't let us keep coming to church, going home, coming to church, and going home, getting dressed, getting undressed, uh, going here and going there, traveling to this conference, traveling to that conference. Who's hot, who's not? Who got caught up in the biggest membership and who has the less membership? My God, help us. Uh, to make a profit out of this mess. For God never continues to do business where there is no profit. 
When he looks at you and he looks at me, he want to know, do I got some profit? Uh, are you producing on the level you're supposed to do? Because you have been planning how long? How long you been saved now? Do you got any profit? You got any fruit from your lifestyle? Are you, are you just a taker? Do I got any fruit I can see out of your life? Because I can see fruit out of your life. I can do business with you. Hmm. So God never continues to do business where there is no profit. And a whole generation died in the wilderness except for a handful of people. Graveyards all over the wilderness. Just think if everybody in here who has had transactions but no profit would drop dead. How many funerals would we have? <laughs> You'll be shocked at who would drop. Because God does not measure success the way men measure success. You can be great in the eyes of men and be lacking in the eyes of God. Watch this. There was only one good thing that came out of all this mess. In the process of them coming and going and doing, the millions of people who died in the sun-drenched desert, the only sunshine, the only ray of sunshine, amen, in this dismal mess was that the woman, the women got pregnant in the middle of the problem. Isn't that something? <laughs> that you can become pregnant in the middle of your problem. You can have dreams, amen, and, 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 and visions and great stuff in the middle of your mess. That you can have something new kicking on the inside of you while you are dealing with something old. Isn't it amazing how God can bless you in a mess? Isn't it amazing how God will step right in the worst situation just to bring birth to something that he wanted to bring birth out of? Some of you have come out of some adverse situations. Some stuff I can't even relate to what you have been through. You came out of problems, and the only good thing that came out of it was you. Ah, yeah. No, your mom and daddy wasn't pre I mean, uh, wasn't married. No. One thing about Matt, but here you come. The old church would say you was born out of wedlock. The old, old church would have said, hey, man, you, you are a bastard. But God's, I know what I instructed. Uh, I need somebody who can relate what I'm talking about. Because you may thought you was a mistake. You may thought, hey, man, that God don't care about you. But it was God's hand of mercy that rest on your life and said, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. A matter of fact, I'm going to do a greater thing than you. Okay. The women gave birth in the wilderness. Birthed a whole new generation. They were born in the wilderness. Joshua was to lead them into the promised land. Why Joshua? Because Joshua had been impacted by Moses but not limited to Moses. You got to get that. See, sometimes we have been impacted by the generation that we came out of, but we're not limited to it. God said, I got, I got something for you to do that's going to be on a greater plane. Now, understand that you're going to be talked about because, no, because nobody have ever seen this way before. But, but I have called you because you have been through some trial and some error and some adverse situation that regular people don't have to go through. But I, I did all that for one reason, because you can understand. Yeah. 
Joshua had a good, solid foundation of the miracle working power of God. My brothers and sisters, you ought to have something down on the inside of you that you know God did for you and nobody else have done that for you. Things, amen, that you, get this, you don't got to ask anybody about things, amen, you have no, you don't have any questions about. You should have one, two, three, four, five, ten things that you can say, I know God did that right there. Joshua was, com was fully convinced of the power of God. He had the best of both worlds. He is called to lead this new generation. He was well instructed by the fathers, but not limited to the hang-ups and the insecurities of the father. And Joshua moved the people into the promised land. And God had ordained that the prophecy will be fulfilled in their lives, in the children of wilderness. Now, why is this so important for us today? Because unlike their fathers who were born in houses that had addresses and lived on the streets of Egypt, this group was born in tents. Born with suitcases packed. Born ready to go. Born ready to be moved. Born, they used to travel. They, they, they used to move in light. They were not tied down to a system or a denomination or doctrines. These children were born on the move. If you're going to be any part of what God doing in these last days, amen, you're going to have to learn how to hang loose. You can't be tied to no denomination, and you can't be tied to dogmas, and you can't be tied to insecurities. You got to be, if God said it's time to move, I'm, it's time to move. <laughs> On a moment's notice, and here's where the church have gotten soft. We have gotten too comfortable with where we're at. We ain't had it this good, amen, in millennials where you can come and sit in a controlled environment where there's no riffraff. There ain't roof leaks and water and buckets on the floor to catch the water. Bathrooms are fully functioning. Sitting in chairs covered with foam. Carpet up under your feet. We ain't never had this good, but the problem is we haven't gotten too comfortable. So when God says move, we can't move. Well, let me just get a little bit closer. What about your house? How quick can you get up and move? Lord, I don't know about all that. And it was fine when you were talking about the church house, but now you're talking about my house. And you're talking about moving. I have learned this right here. I have learned not to get so caught up on things. Because when God said, let them go, let them go. I ain't got nobody know what I'm talking about. Every house I move from, you know what? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But see you later. Hey, I ain't caught up on the neighbors. I ain't caught up on the cars I have. I ain't caught up on none of that stuff. It's just the house. Time to move. Everybody can't go with me right now. I'm just trying to go down your road and whatever, amen, God has called you to walk away from. Can you? This group of people learn how to pack light. They had no hang up on no houses, no addresses, amen, no streets. They could move on a dime. These children, amen, were born in the wilderness. They did not have cribs and little mobiles above their heads. These children did not have roofs over their head. The children were used to an open sky. They were used to Shekinah glory shining down on them. These children were hooked on the presence of God, not hooked on an address, not hooked on a building, not hooked on a house. These children were hooked on the master, Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha, not hooked on Pharaoh. But they were hooked on God. And these children were born in the wilderness, born out of trouble, born out of adversity, born out of dilemma, born
going out of a crisis, do I have anybody that can relate to these children? No, it wasn't good growing up in my house. No, it wasn't good growing up in my school. No, it wasn't good in my neighborhood. But thank God I'm out. I'm out, and I'm out with a sane mind. I'm out with some profit. Some of you were born, get this, you were born with your back against the wall by no choice of yours, born in controversy. Born, amen, in the middle of struggle. Born in a mess. These children were born without a house, born without anything to hold on to. All they had to hold on was God. His arms held them up, amen. His voice spoke to them. The anointing began to teach them. For some of you, it has not been easy. For some of you, you were born in struggle, and you are used to pressure. While other people crumble up under pressure, you smile at pressure. And you look, amen, with ha halfway cross-sided. Is that all? You trying to tell me you crying in the bathroom over this? Can I talk to some black people in this house? Can I just talk to a few Negroes in the house? There are some things don't bother us. You can call me any kind your name up. I done heard it before. Hey, Amen. you can do this. I, I'm used to that. So when real trouble comes, I don't faint by the wayside. You got other cultures, hey, amen, can't take talk. When the pandemic came and said you can't come in here without a mask, you had other people eat, eat, eat. be like, so what? I'm used to not going through the front door. Oh, I, I, I'm used to not being served. I'm used. To, I'm used to this. And so God brought you up with no address. Brought you up in trouble. Brought you up in controversy. Now I can move you because you understand. You understand what it takes. For me to amen, show my power in you. You don't get caught up in things anymore. I got any survivors in the house. Like, yeah. Some of you are used to going home by yourself. Ah, can I talk to a few single folk? You are used to eating dinner by yourself. You are used to going to the movies by yourself. You crawl most of the days of your life, but through it all, God Almighty. Somebody say, I, I gotta go back to Andre Krause. Somebody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> through it all, I have learned to trust in God. I have learned to lean on him. Through it all, through all the storm, trial, tribulation, I still know how to praise him and thank him. I dare not stay home. He been too good to me. Once again, I got any survivors, any, any, any survivors. You're the one that God has called to carry the answer prayers to family members. Oh, can I talk to somebody? It was you, amen, the one that went through the most. The one that said, I'm out of here. I don't care if you die, live, I'm out. It's you that has been called. Through you, their prayers, their, their prayers will be answered. You are the one that God has called to fulfill dreams and promises in the land flowing with milk and honey. You haven't learned how to hang loose. You haven't learned how to be your own counselor. You haven't learned how to talk to yourself. No, you're not crazy. But I've learned. i got to talk to myself. No, I'm not crazy. No, I'm not losing my mind. Talking to yourself at the traffic light. You can make it. You can make it. You can do it. You haven't learned how to hold your own hand. You ever learn how to raise your hands up and put them on your own head and say, by his stripes, I am healed. These children 
did not know anybody but God. And then God said, I can use them. Don't know no protocol. They are not circumcised. They're not in covenant with me, but I can use that group. You better watch out for the 2023 crowd that's about to enter into this church house. They won't have no church protocol. They won't know scriptures. They won't know a scripture from a fairy tale. But God said, those are the ones I'm using. And the very ones sitting down here acting like you're giving God, amen, all of this because you showed up, you're about to be out of here. You're about to be out of here because the word was not mixed with faith to those that heard it. God said, I'm going to use them their fathers and mothers died in the wilderness. They was an orphanage generation. A disconnected generation. A detached generation. They did not have the morality of their fathers. They, they, they were not circumcised, circumcised like their fathers. They did not gossip and complain like their mothers. And because they were born in the wilderness, they had a different mentality. And God looked over their weakness. God. Oh, you didn't, you didn't get that. And he looked over their sins. And he looked over their shortcomings. No, he didn't forget about it. He just looked over it. He said, we're going to deal with that a little later. But right now, I can use you the way you are. And God said, I'm still going to bring you over into the promised land in spite of not having a covenant relationship with me. Whether you want to admit it or not, God had to look over some of the stuff that you were in this morning. I know you don't want to admit it. I know you don't want to say it. You're all dressed up nice in your Super Bowl attire. Some of you got nice smelling cologne on, fresh Jordan's on. I mean, you got all kind of nice stuff going on in your life. And God says, I know you look good on the outside. I know you got some ism and some schisms going on, but I'm still going to take you over to the other side. I'm going to let that wicked generation die off, but you, I'm going to bring you to, aren't you glad he's going to bring you to the other side? I am. God said, I know you're wrestling with some flesh issues. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count it, amen, unto righteousness. And the Lord brought them out, just like he had brought you and I out. Don't get it twisted, amen. You are not living that holy and that righteous. That God says, amen, you're the one. God said, I'm going to look over that. I'm going to look for the ones, amen, that's going to hear my voice and do in spite of what the news say, in spite of what the government say, in spite of what the economy say. I'm going to use that one. Just blessing anybody. Yeah. Well, in our text, <laughs> the Bible says when they got to Gilgal, God said, I'm getting ready to take you where you have never been. And I said at the Raleigh North Christian Center that God's getting ready to take us where, he, where we have never been. The church is not in the condition it is in. The church would not be this full unless COVID came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we got to turn away cars every single Sunday. We're trying to figure up creative ways, amen, just to, amen, park cars up here to get people in, because we got to turn them away. We didn't have this problem before COVID. See, when the world is bad, folks come to church. When the world doing good, amen, we get too comfortable, amen. We down at the park swinging golf balls. We walk in the door playing volleyball like... But soon, as soon as trouble come, here come the church folk. God said, I know how to get my people back into the house. Let me bring a little trouble, a little controversy. <laughs> oh. God said, I'm going to take this church to another place. 
He said, and it won't be anything you have ever had to be compared to. And God said, I'm going to take you where you've never been before. Why, why, why? Because you were willing to walk by yourself. Because you were willing to hang loose because you let people go who wanted to go. Can I pause there? You got to learn how to let people go that want to go. Thank you for being here. I see you, but don't really want to be here. And when somebody come up to you, you still don't know where else would I be? I'm blessed there. I'm whole there. I'm ball and shot call. Well, where will I be? <laughs> God said, I'm going to take you there because you made up your mind and said, if I have to go by myself, I will go. And God said, because you are willing, I'm going to bless you and take you to another level. And you have never seen, you have never seen or been this way before. So I want you to get ready for that next level. That next level that you ain't never seen before, you can't even prepare for it. You ain't got the protocol for it because you've never seen it before. Somebody said, I just turned the corner on my mirror. That's what just happened. I just turned the corner on my miracle. It seemed like I stumbled here, but God said, I brought you here, and now you're about to see what's on the other side of the corner. He said, I'm getting ready to take you from labor to reward. Who want to receive that? I done grinded all my life. I done struggled all my life. Now he's about to turn my labor into a reward. I know some of you thought you were forgotten. I know you thought, amen, you have done way too much sin. I know you thought, amen, you had too many troubles. And I want you to know that nothing you have ever been through and nothing in your little bag of sorrows is strong enough to hinder the prophecy that God has spoken over your life. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I don't care what comes, when it comes, it shall not prosper. It will not produce what the accident wanted to produce. Ah, it, you will not turn out the way the relationship thought it was going to turn out. God said it will not produce because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The devil tried it, but it didn't work. It looked like it worked. It would have worked. The devil thought, amen, it wasn't going to work, but all through it, God said, I, I'm taking care of this and the text Joshua brought them to Gilgal and Gilgal was the turning point at Gilgal he says now is the time for you to be circumcised <laughs> now listen to me all of the carnal unsettled unforgiving fleshly issues that God had overlooked up until this point because of the magnitude of what God is going to do in your life it's time for you to take out sharp knives you got to take them out you got to be willing to be cut oh oh the whole thing even the music stopped everything Ah. Ah. Oh, I got the visual of a sharp knife. It's now time for my flesh to be cut. I thought I was over it. I thought he just totally forgot about it. But he said, before you can go to the next level, oh, before you can go to that next place, I'm, I'm going to have to cut you. Oh, in some vulnerable places. I'm going to have to cut you in some place, some secret place. I'm going to have to cut you where you don't want nobody to know Take out some sharp knives. <laughs> so see your face. I mean some sharp knives. Because God says you are standing on the brink of the miracle. You are right there. You are in Gilgal. You are about to go into Jericho. God. 
See, if you got to read about Jericho to understand where I'm at right now, you're about to go into the tent city. They had to fight giants. And Jericho will be the tenth. And everything that's tenth, God said it's mine. I have given you all of the cities in the valley, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Canaan. I've given you all their gold, their silver, their wealth, everything. But you're about to come to Jericho. The tent city. And I can't have you go into the tent city with all that fleshly mess on. Because when you give it back to me, I want it holy. And the only thing holy is mine. Y'all getting all this. Somebody say, take out some sharp knives. Uh, I mean some sharp knives. It's time to do business. What am I trying to say? Don't give the devil. Don't give him anything to work with. It's time to take out a sharp knife. You don't have time to get angry at anybody anymore. You don't got time to get even with anybody anymore. You don't got time to be jealous or envy of anybody anymore. It's time to take out some sharp knives. Get your knife out. God is getting ready to bless you. Get your knife out. God is getting ready to elevate you. It's time to sanctify yourself because he's about to do a new thing. The little things God overlooked. Amen. When you was in your puberty, in your adolescence of your life, little things he overlooked in your teen years, little things he overlooked in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s. He says, now it's time for you to come all the way in. Ah, oh, man, I got seven minutes. I need to stop right here because some of you, this is as loose as you want to be. You are loose Christians. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're loose. You're loose. And you're carnal. And God has overlooked it. He's overlooked it and still blessed you. But he said, today, we're going to have to bring it on. We're going to bring it on in here. All of that flesh you showing on social media, all of them booty cheeks you got on social media, all of your breasts out on social media, who am I talking to back here? It's time to get some sharp knives and it's time to do business. I know some of you can't clap. I know some of you can't rejoice because it's you Hallelujah. that's saying it's time to come all the way. I'm trying to help a mother. I'm trying to help a father that got too much going on. You got a scripture right beside nakedness. And God said it should not be. Why well, ain't got no claps on this side? Oh my, why well, ain't got no help over here? Can I get somebody, amen, to rejoice with me? It's time to bring it on in. Somebody get some sharp knives out. Uh. <laughs> uh. And they went through a cutting at Gilgal. And I, I'm not lying. Cutting hurts. It hurts when you gotta cut people a loose. It hurts when you gotta break attachments. It hurts when you got to cut the cord. The residue of flesh got to be cut. The secret immorality has to be cut. Everything that hinders you from moving into the realm of the spirit has to be cut. When you go through some things of cutting, don't go out to battle too quickly. Sit on down. Let's finish this on up. When you've been cut and you are bleeding, you don't jump off the operating table and go home. You got to be made whole. Even they say if you give too much blood at one time, you just can't jump up. 
and go home. They want you sit there for a minute. Gather yourself together because in doing good could kill you. So at Gilgal, they got cut, but he says, stay here and heal first. And some of you have come to Raleigh North cut and bruised from where you came from. And now you're healing, but you're not whole. And now you're ready to get up and start doing some things. And God said, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh. You are not healed to the place you need to be healed. It ain't time for you to be preaching all in the bathroom. You ain't healed yet. Oh, my God. I know somebody said you're going to be a preacher and you this and that. Hey Amen. That may be so, but not now. You ain't healed yet. At Gilgal, they got cut. So when you get cut, don't go out there too fast. And the Bible says, after they were cut at Gilgal, they stayed right there until they were healed. I'm so grateful that God won't cut you and then not heal you. I'm glad he understands my pain. I'm glad, oh my God, I'm glad. Lord, you know, you understand. You died so you can understand my pain and what I'm dealing with. I'm so glad that I can lift my hands to him and say, I did what you told me to do. But it still hurt anyway. Let me say it. I'm being, I'm, I'm obedient. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm obedient, but it still hurts. Hmm. Have anybody ever cried in the middle of the night? But when you got up, you said, "I still obeyed you." I feel lonely. I feel empty, and I feel forsaken. But I still obeyed you. I've been criticized and ostracized, but I still obeyed you. I'm going through some changes right now, but I obeyed you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And God said, just hang out around Gilgal. Don't go take Jericho. Don't march today. Don't fight today. Just stay right here, and I'm going to heal you. And some of you have been going through immeasurable pain in a struggle, pain that nobody can even relate to. Hurting that nobody even knows about. Walking with a limp because you are carrying around the burden and people don't even know it. And you have been strong in the face of people but bleeding in your secret places. And the Lord says, if you would just stay right here, I'm going to heal you. I was praying this morning, and the Lord says, I want you to speak these words. And he says, I want you to tell them the healing balm of heaven has been released. Now, I heard of the healing balm of Gilead. But he said, no, Gilead was, was in a region. But look them in the eye, says, the healing balm of heaven has dropped like manna on every Israelite's house or set right in front of their tent. He said, tell them the healing bomb of heaven has dropped. Now, some of you, amen, you ain't got it yet, but maybe you got, amen, download this, whatever you got. But he says, it's already have started. It's dropping right now. Now, you got to understand, there is no hell in heaven, pain in heaven, struggle in heaven, sickness in heaven, calling in heaven. God said, now pull that down. Pull that on down. He said, I'm dropping all that upon people that living in this world. I'm going to drop the healing bomb of heaven on them. He said, tell them it was released from the wound in my side. It was released from my beaten back. Oh my God. God, I'm going to heal everything. Everything up under, up under, up under my auspices, I'm going to heal. Everything in this world, I'm going to heal. That obey my voice. He said, just stay right there. Just stay right there. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to give you back what was lost. I'm going to bring you to the point where it won't affect you like it used to affect you. I'm going to bless you. Let me jump on here. I got three more minutes. I just got to leave some of this, but... 
I want to get to this last part. Because all I want you to do is receive this healing. Somebody's coming through a broken home, a broken marriage. Some of you coming through trouble with your children, an elderly parent, trouble in your business, trouble in your ministry. You need to lift your hands. You need to lift your hands and let the healing balm of the Lord heal you because, get this, God really cares about your pain. And he wants to heal you. Apostle, apostle, pastor, doctor, whatever you want to call. Can you tell me, how will I know I'm healed? That's a good question. How can I be sure I'm ready to go on? And my brothers and sisters, what the Lord will do, he will take the sting out of the pain. Oh, yes. The bee is still buzzing, but there's no more pain. How will I know I'm healed? when you can remember it, but it doesn't matter anymore. I know I'm healed. It don't matter no more. When you can look at that person and feel no rage, look at somebody and say, I'm healed. Because I used to look at them and pain would arise, but I'm healed. When you can hear what they said and not get even, you're healed. When you can rejoice in the middle of a storm, I'm healed. Because sometimes to get from where you are to where he wants you to be, he has to cut you. But just know this, the cutting is not to destroy you. The cutting is to bless you. So for all of you that felt like giving up, felt like all your leaves have fell off your flower, lost jobs, lost houses, lost friends, to all of you that the devil said, how can you be a Christian and go through hell like this? To everybody up under the sound of my voice, that the devil said, I thought you were saved. And how can you go through hell like this? But I got a message from God above. The Lord knows I have lost some stuff. Yes, he does. He says, I know your flower blossom, amen, has fallen to the ground, but God says, I didn't cut you to kill you. I came to bless you. And God is not limited just to move you into the palace. God says, I'll bless you in the wilderness. I'll bless you through a mess. I'll bless you through a storm. That's how you know it's me, because I'm blessing while still chaos is going on around you and in you. But just trust me, when it's all said and done, you will see the mighty power of God start to move in places you thought it could never, ever be. Because God said, I'm not just a God of the palace. I'm God of the wilderness. God bless you. I see you all come Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I pray you are inspired to take your life to the next level. Now, I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment and let me know how this bless you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you will never miss a video. I'll see you next time. God bless you.